Let's now look at the range of OLAP pivot. As we said before, the second parameter to an OLAP pivot determines the area that is filled with the values from the result of the OLAP pivot. Take a little more of a, of a look at this. The OLAP table function would use the labels across the top of an axis, across the top of your columns or your rows to determine what members are actually calculated. The OLAP pivot does not function like that. The OLAP pivot uses the value that's represented in these particular cells to determine what goes on columns and what goes on rows. As we can see here, if we look a little closer, we can see some syntax that indicates that for regions, I want regions to be my first label on columns and I want all my regions. And in this instance, I want all my rows. I want months, I want as my first set of rows and I want all of them. I'll go further into the syntax in a moment. It is not imperative that you understand the syntax as there are wizards to build it for you. <clears throat> However, the important thing also to remember is that when the OLAP pivot calculates, the OLAP pivot not only populates the data in this area, it also populates the labels in this area. Therefore, that's why when you look at the range that's selected, it is A8 through H21 indicating that both the data area and the label area is part of the OLAP pivot function. Okay. So what happened with delete rows? Let's actually go back to this function <clears throat> and let's remove the zero rows option. We'll reset that to zero. I'm going to recalculate. Let's look at the range here. My current range is from A8 to A25. <clears throat> what now happens when I set the option to delete rows or to constrain zero rows? My range will shrink. Let's now try something here. Let's insert some new information down here. This is the next section of my report. Oftentimes a report can consist of multiple sections, perhaps the bottom section being totals, or perhaps the bottom section or different sections being other elements or other axes of the cube that you want to look at. Well, in a normal reporting concept in Excel, when, you, when your data shrinks or expands, the bottom elements of data must either shrink or expand to create a correct report. In normal Excel functionality, when you say delete rows, Excel automatically adjusts the other rows below it by, by pulling them up. The OLAP table pivot function works similar. Right now, the current region set for this insertion is A8 to H21. Let's go back into the pivot. Let's turn off zero rows. <clears throat> and hit OK. When I recalculate, the text that I inserted is shifted down. The formatting is still correct for this report. The text that I inserted is one blank row below the function, the, the, the bottom row of my data. What happens when we bring it back up again? Let's go into here. And let's make it so that we do zero rows. <clears throat> and let's recalculate. As you can see, the text still stays one row below my block of data. This is very important inside of uh, when generating reports, as since these elements are coming from Power OLAP, a user can add new members to a dimension. What's this mean? It means that the report might alter based on either new data coming into the report or new members coming into the report. By using the OLAP pivot function, you can assure that your report will stay consistent. In other words, the rows of data or columns of data will grow and shrink based on the data that you're asking for. So again, even within the selection of your page parameters, this will grow and shrink. Pivots can be nested one on top of the other. In other words, you may have the first pivot want to display your sales data. <clears throat> you may have another pivot function inserted below it. This pivot may use the same intersection of 
members are across the top, but it, instead of doing sales, it may do units or it may do price or it may do other some other element along one of the page dimensions. If you nest all these elements, the report will stay consistent, shrinking and growing as necessary as you change page members or as new data or new members come in. <clears throat> other options of pivot. The pivot function supports a double click feature. If you double click on pivot, you can use this design interface to help you navigate and, and modify your pivot elements. What can we do with it? The left hand side shows what elements you have on pages and what you have on rows. On the right hand side, you can define the options. Hide zero rows, hide zero columns, delete rows and delete columns. As you can see, these values default to whatever was specified in the OLAP pivot function when selected. The operators list is simply a list of operations you can occur, you can uh, perform on row or column constraints. The pick option allows you to pick the members that you want to constrain along. <clears throat> what else can we do in here? Let's say that we really don't want all of our regions across our columns. Let's say we want a specific set. You can double click on regions and determine which values you want to show there. There are seven options that you can use. All is the default when slicing from Power OLAP. You can specify details. Details means you only want to show members across the top that are detail members. In this example, World and North America are the sum of, North America is the sum of Canada and USA, and World is the sum of North America and South America. By selecting details, I'll simply say the individual, see the individual countries in the slice, Canada, USA, and then any South American countries. You can do aggregates. In other words, I won't see any details. You can specify a level. A level is a location in the hierarchy representation. In other words, world will be level one, North America and South America level two, and Canada and USA level three. You can specify a list. By clicking on list, you can specify individual members that you want to see. I may want to see Canada and Argentina. This is a disparate list and any members can be selected whether aggregates or details. You can select children. You may want to see the children of a particular member. Maybe I want to see all my children of North America. I can click North America, say OK, and this will return to me the, the children of North America as the members across my columns those being Canada and USA. I can do subset. In other words, I can define a subset and tell the pivot function that I want to display all the members in a particular subset. Besides being able to pick all of these items, I can also determine what I want to be used to display for my member names. In this instance, I don't have any aliases or properties to find for this dimension. However, if you had uh, a, an alias to find for regions, perhaps called short name, I could de decide that I wanted to display the member names using the short names. <clears throat> In that type of situation, Canada might appear as CAN, North America as NA, South America as SA. These are various options that I can specify in the pivot along each dimension, each axis of, of, the, of the cube, meaning each dimension. Let's select details just to see what happens. I'll pick OK. As you can see, the syntax changed from, re from regions all to regions detail. If I say OK, you can see that the syntax here also changed. If I now recalculate, the members that I receive across the top of my slice are simply my detail members. Another nice element of this report, being the pivot, is that if additional detail members are added to the regions dimension and this slice is recalculated, those additional detail members will also be added to this slice and automatically recalculated and included in the OLAP pivot function. Like the read writes and the table and the read, I can change page members by simply double clicking and selecting different members. <clears throat>